everybody, Yusaki Julio here in Tokyo and today I'm gonna be talking about winders. So yeah, the winder for the Mamiya RC67, well this one is a Pro 2 version, is a winder 2. I do not have the Pro 1, you guys know already how I much I recommend to get the Pro 2 instead of the Pro 1, but um, but some people still get the, the old versions and I want to talk a little bit about it. It doesn't really change that much, but it does have a few different things from the Pro 1 version. So, um, first of all, a little bit of a story. I got a one long time ago. I ordered it through eBay, as, as many of you do, and I don't mind. And when I got it, I didn't have the batteries to, to put on. It does use six, six AA batteries, and I didn't have the batteries or the time to go buy them, but I really wanted to try it out. And I saw that um, this Pro 2 version has a a DC 9 volts uh, in over here so I figured um, I look for them in between my cables and I found out I had a, a 12 volt one from a laptop so I thought eh, well it shouldn't be much difference right <laughs> so I put it in uh, press the start button and I saw, I saw some smoke coming out of course I burned the electronics I unscrew everything out I pull it out try to fix it maybe if it was just one thing that burns me I can replace it I couldn't get it to work so yeah um, and then the next one that I got I had a, I had another issue but um, I'll talk about it when I go through through this thing so what it is what is this thing right so the, this is called the power winder and the power winder uh, fits right under your RC camera right there and attaches to a, a tripod socket because it has a, a tripod input over here. If you see the hole here is a little bit bigger is because of my my double grip setup that I have. I actually couldn't find the little screw like that size so I had to use the big one. I found that one and I'm, I'm using the bigger screw. This is just an, a really little attachment that you, you see that. So you can unscrew that and it will be like a, 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 like a step down of the hole. So it has a tread and then inside the tread it has another tread. And this is the same thing that it uses here. This is without that, that thread in there. I can take this out of here and put it in here, basically. What it does is it recocks the shutter. So in the lens, it has the, the shutter that, you know, that closes the, the leaves over here. It, it winds it back out. It also moves the mirror. Then, you know, the mirror, when you, when you shoot, the mirror would come up. And then advances the film. Of course, whenever the shutter release is activated, either on the camera or by any means of electromagnetic shutter release cables, or and uh, this thing has also a wireless remote that you can use. So over here is the plugs for the electromagnetic um, conductor over here. It does provide some electricity uh, as per the the remote shutter, and you basically you connect it over here, and you can tell the camera, okay, go ahead and shoot, and. Um, you can see the previews and whatever so yeah, you can use another type of um, triggers and stuff like that and basically if you trigger over here trigger um, if you trigger over here or trigger with the button over here the shutter release button it will actually go ahead and wind your wine and do the mirror look up and everything like that so either if you're using it in a studio or on location this this is actually really helpful the reason why I got it is because when I'm using a digital back um, I usually have the cable, uh, I used to have the cable from the lens to the back and it's like all here and, and when I'm winding this thing I'm, I'm usually like tripping on the cable or push, pushing it out when I'm doing this. So I wanted to have something that I'll just push the button and it will do. I didn't need to do this all the time because um, for the digital back the, the cable connects from here to the lens so I would have it like dangling here and every time I'm like trying to hold it and moving. It was just bothersome for me so I thought if I have a winder, just place the winder under it and then trigger. Um, I didn't realize <laughs> this thing by itself is, is half, it's like 500 grams, uh, a little more than 500 grams actually is 530 grams without the battery. So when you add six batteries in 500 grams, that's a half a kilo. So plus the six batteries, I mean, it's, it's too heavy. <laughs> Um, and this only makes the camera more sturdier if you want to make it if you want to put it that way now this thing takes two types of batteries either alkaline or manganese batteries the alkaline batteries um, or or you actually you can actually use the NICD batteries 
this one, the Pro, uh, the Wonder 2 version, has a basically a battery test. There's two little buttons right there, and you can actually test it. And obviously, there is a special AC adapter that goes in here, and it can be it's sold separately. It can be used in there. Just if, in case you're in a studio, you don't want to be using the batteries. You can plug this thing into the to the plug and whatever. Uh, field transport. Uh, this one. Uh, transport the film every 1.5 seconds so it's a little bit faster than the old one the first winder it takes around two seconds and this is like 1.5 seconds so it's a little bit faster and according to the the speed of shooting of the digital backs usually it's one point something seconds so it's actually pretty good it doesn't it doesn't uh, let you shoot as fast as uh, you know we're just pushing you know the trigger happy would slow you down a little bit to shoot for the digital back and that is just perfect like that now it rolls um, around 120 film uh, if you're using the the alkaline batteries it would give you around 50 rolls uh, in in whole charge batteries and um, if you're using uh, the manganese batteries it will give you like 20 rolls and if you're using the NCD battery in ICD batteries then it will give you around 30 rolls. Of course, these are tests that my Mia did in laboratory with normal weather conditions and um, you know at room temperature and stuff like that. If the room temperature gets colder, the batteries uh, don't work as well, etc., etc. After the film is finished, it would automatically start winding the film for you, and it would just like do a loop, and you can see it like like shooting like quickly, quickly, quickly. And I'll show you guys there. I'm actually. I have one film over here. It's not expired, and uh, I'm just gonna use it for, for to show you guys. It's a Provia 100F. I'm not gonna shoot anything. I'm just gonna do dummy shoots so you can see how this will work. This has a some kind of electrostatic a kind of prevention kind of system. So, in rare cases, um, the manual specifies that these can uh, be affected by a strong electro ex electromagnetic wave, and it would make it work a little bit funky and it says in such cases carefully use this product <laughs> um i never have encountered anything like that but except for the problem with the first one about the batteries and stuff like that that i couldn't that i didn't even had and stuff all right so let's go from the beginning uh batteries all right definitely is uh lighter come over here release a release lever you you push this forward and it pops out and there you go your compartment for six batteries now over here be careful it does have a, a, a position over here as you can see it has springs on the bottom and it doesn't matter that it has the springs on the bottom I'm, I I had this error with on the first and second one that I got actually on this one where um, I didn't realize that the springs not always meant to be on the minus side of the battery i always try to put the springs on the minus right uh, most of the setups for for uh, like toys and stuff the springs would actually host the the minus so be sure to actually look at the little guidance over here it has a plus and a minus and like on this side over here the middle battery goes facing down so the plus of the battery goes towards the spring and that's just just funky to me but this is how it's set up the first time that i put the batteries i put it wrong actually and if you're wondering what this uh batteries are it's just like <laughs> batteries from 7-eleven here in japan so on the other side it actually has the the plus side goes under on this side so that's plus bottom and this will be the plus also to the bottom and the middle one will be the minus towards the string there so it's basically um, opposite sides, opposite directions. And that's how it looks. It, it, it's already heavy right there. You put it back in there and clip it. There you go. So basically that's, that's pretty much to put the batteries in there. Um, definitely be sure to match those positive and negative poles with the battery with the symbols in the cartridge. For the ones who have the two uh, version, uh, be sure to, take, to put it off all the time. Turn it on and you can do a battery test depending on the type of batteries that you have. If you have over here the LR or BC, those are alkaline manganese or the NCD. Basically there are two little buttons over here and when you press the button you can see the light 
coming up here. Now, if the light is blinking like that, and I definitely wanted to show you guys this, if the light is blinking like that, it means that the battery is almost gone. So this tells me that I need to replace my batteries as soon as I can. Uh, it will still work for a little bit more, uh, actually for a lot more. It, it works until like the batteries are completely dead, but that blinking over there just tells you that you need you need to have it uh, replace batteries. So that's one of the one of the things that are uh, interesting about this one. So if the lamp is completely on, like perfectly on all the time, then the, the battery capacity is sufficient. If not, the battery capacity has decreased a lot and you need to replace it. And if the light doesn't come out, then it means the batteries are completely dead. So, or they're inserted incorrectly. When you're not using it, of course, be sure to switch it off when you're not using it, especially for longer periods of time. Uh, if you're actually not going to use it for a long period of time, like week, months and whatever, maybe years, take out the batteries because these things get to, you know, just drain out or leak out and it's just a mess to clean up and it's really nasty. So be sure to remember to take out the batteries when you're not using it. Same with the camera, right? When it's cold temperatures or uh, or using cold batteries, the winder may not work. If you're living in a very cold place, the winder may not work. In that case, you have to switch it off and, and use the, the lever. And um, it, this is, is if it, it doesn't work, of course. So uh, you have to take care of the batteries not to be too cold. If you're going to be... Uh, doing a lot of tests of the batteries or you using very very continuously like non-stop non-stop for a long time uh, the batteries would drain really fast supposedly but i haven't had to encounter any problems i've been using the same batteries for probably like half a year and not photo shoots every day but i do shoot a lot and uh yeah this, they're still pretty fine pretty probably a couple months not not really half a year all right so another thing uh for the people who have the winder too this um uh, AC adapter when you put the AC adapter it actually disconnects the use of the battery and it will turn this light on all the time it doesn't mean that it's testing or anything or charging or anything it just means that it has power and that it's um, that is a thing to know because this is usually just for battery test and actually for when you're shooting it would um, turn on the light and it will show you that uh, the light is on there so right now I'm pressing the button it doesn't work be sure to switch this thing on switch it on there you go, there's my blinking light there that I need to replace the battery. So I'll be thinking of replacing it very soon. Another thing is do not mix battery types. So don't change, um, don't put different types of batteries. Don't put like a full one and an empty one and one that was old. All the batteries should be at the same charge, at the same level. So get it from the same package and put it all here. So when I'm gonna replace all these batteries, basically I'm not gonna see which one still has battery or not. I'm gonna go ahead and replace all of them and scrap all this that I have over here. If you see that your performance goes go a little bit slower because it will be like eh, maybe you can you can totally tell that it's not going as usual. Um, just replace all the batteries. That's pretty much that's pretty much it. And if you mix the batteries, it may demand too much from one battery and, and try to put the energy back to another battery and it may cause leakage inside of this and may damage the unit so uh, be sure to have the batteries all replaced at the same time all right so let's get to the fun part uh, let's attach this thing over here so as you can see it has some connectors here that it um, they recommend you not to touch them which I've been touching a lot actually because they have a spring and it's fun to touch them but they recommend you not to touch them um, if you do just make sure to clean them up uh, you know whenever you think it's not working well uh, these are the alignment pins and this is the screw for the uh, for the tripod and you can manage it through here over here this is a, a security key over here you can flip this out and as you can see it comes out and in it's a little a little play in there so and you can spin it through the bottom and when you're done you can switch it back on so it's a way to just hold this thing back up and over here it has this gear pretty gear in there um, there you go that's uh, a little gear in there and this gear is the one that is going to be used now when you press the start button I did just press the start button you can see the gear comes out 
and that's that's pretty normal it will be there for a while and then it would retract that is normal the gear comes out to get to try to get to the gears in the camera and it will start back on now uh, don't be afraid if you push it you can actually push it back in you see I'm pushing it back in while it's spinning that's that's normal it's nothing to worry about it spins that way and that is that is perfectly normal all right on the camera we need to get the winder coupler cover uh, which is this one over here and it just lights to one side and it reveals a gear under the camera right there you probably see right there that's a gear in there and it's normally shot where it should be shot and you can open it and you can see the gear in there the gear doesn't come out or anything it's just waiting for somebody to to come and touch it and there's your contacts and the screw there so basically you align this thing over here with the alignment pins and you can see this thing pop out a little bit so open it there and just screw it all the way back in there it doesn't need to be extremely tight really um, I, I have found a couple of times when I put it really tight that it actually doesn't work if you put it really tight actually it doesn't let anything move so don't make don't try to like squeeze it all the way in just you know just make it fit it tight it has the alignment pins it's not gonna go anywhere and as long as you can actually close it into here because it has some it has some spikes right there so it would not it would not let it go to some places so just don't don't put it all the way tight so that would be one of the recommendations in there all right so now let's get to use it um, I have it over here I have a bag a 120 film bag uh, it has nothing inside and I'm gonna it's it's switched on right now and I press the start button and you can see it starts moving immediately nothing is going on and you can see this thing is spinning and it tried to get to the first frame now if that didn't happen for you that there's something bad I'm gonna go into the M mode and you can see nothing shoots over here I have it in M mode but nothing is shooting now I can see over here a uh, warning over here that this thing is on still so okay M mode there you go as you can see I took out the dark screen without filming this thing because it doesn't have any film in there as you can see no film and as soon as I shoot the trigger this thing actually uh, winds winds the, the shutter and puts back the mirror up now I'm, I'm on M mode and over here I am on the normal mode I'm on the bottom mode and it does it does work like that if yours is not working like that then uh, check the contacts check the batteries and make sure that it's not extremely tied up at the bottom because uh, I have found that when you tie it up too much it will not actually work so um, uh, that would be something to take care about but that that is pretty much it now I'm gonna show you a couple of things that this thing actually can do and let's check those out so first of all I'm gonna put my film in there it's, it's a dummy film well it's not dummy it's actually a good film but just for just for science I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> pretty much waste it so I have this, this spool in the second one and um, I think I already showed you guys how to how to tie this up so I'll go ahead and do it real fast and you have to go ahead and put the start the start line over here you align it on that arrows over here and why am I repeating this is because this is how the winder actually starts you see that start it's a line in there I put it back in here close it and now it's the time to actually turn this on and press start so I'm gonna show you over here there is the red with the S which is the start right there I don't know if you can tell I'm gonna press the start button over here and as you can see it just went bananas now I took away this thing on the from the M to the middle part if it was on the M and you press the start while you have film it's not gonna wind it you put it on the middle and you press that start now I press it again nothing happens 
it's just waiting for me it's it left me at the first shot over there and I'm gonna go ahead and do the tests so there you go I shot it I shot again it's winding and this thing is moving towards the next the next shoot over here there you go that's number four number five number six and I can hear it is kind of slowing down a little bit now I don't know if you can tell but this uh, the bottom part actually moves just a tiny little bit I don't know if you guys can tell maybe like that now it finished the roll and without me pressing anything it's automatically winding the film and it left it all the way winded so there is no more shooting over here if I press start it will just continue to do a couple of loops but basically basically it already winded the film for you and it left it all the way on this side so you can actually just open the back and take your, your film that is completely done and all spooled out like that. And there you go, just put it out there, zip it and send it for developing, which I just wasted a film. Let's do a couple more tests with this. I'm gonna take this 120 film back out and I'm gonna go ahead and put some Polaroid in there. There's my Polaroids. And Polaroids, it's on, the, it's on the middle part, but it will still shoot. You see, the Polaroid still has the, the dark slide cover. I haven't taken it out. But this back, it actually does allow you to shoot. And as you can see, it actually moves and cranks and everything out. So I'm going to take this out. And this over here, uh, conveniently, is my, last, is my last photo over here. So I'm just gonna shoot at the window. And now I can take it out. There you go. So I took out the Polaroid. One of the last ones because these are not in production anymore. And now I don't have anything and it didn't notice that I finished the Polaroid. It didn't start winding up like crazy. That only happens with the 120 film. Uh, now I don't have anything over here. The back is completely empty. You can see through here. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot since I had this open. And you can see it automatically, you can see the lens and it winds back the, the mirror. You can probably hear it as well. So that's, that's how it happens. So now uh, the other thing to concern with this Polaroid bag is you can actually take it out without even covering it so that's if you're gonna if you're thinking of Polaroid that's that's a thing you need to check uh, next thing we're gonna be checking on the digital bag so I'm gonna go ahead and put my adapter over here and this adapter goes sideways so I'm gonna put it on the R position so this this screws over here go away you can see they, they hide a little bit in there Turn this to the, the red dot over here, the orange dot to the side. And now I can put it straight up like that. And the lock is actually on this side, on the left side. There we go. Now let's get a digital back. Put it in there. Now it's on the R position. If I try to shoot, it just returns to the middle. If I try to shoot, it doesn't work. Digital bags only work when they're on M. There is no cables and you can still shoot. So that's something to, to take in count. Now this thing will work for a while. Uh, it will shoot, drain your batteries out and then you need to change the batteries. Another thing that probably I could show you guys is that 
if you leave this button pressed, it would actually keep shooting. So you can do like a little bit of a continuous shooting if you have the button press permanently. So you can leave it there and it will, it will still work. Now, that's one of the reasons why you wanna actually lock your system if you wanna put it on a, on a bag or somewhere where you think this button may be pressed. Uh, you might as well put it off because if you have it on, on your backpack or if you have it, if you put it away and you move it and you leave it somewhere, maybe this thing eventually will be pressed and it will just like keep spinning and spinning and spinning um, and it will drain your batteries out. So, you know, remember to lock this out and turn off your, your winder when you're not going to be using it for a long time. Uh, I cannot stress that <laughs> enough. Okay, uh, we're going to be checking a few more things in here. So I'm going to grab the same field that is already exposed and I'm just going to load it back again. And I'm going to do a couple of tests. So first of all, uh, it's on S. I tried to shoot, it's not going to work. I take this out. Still not working. I put it on M. It did shoot, it did wind the mirror and the shutter, but it didn't change from the S. So in that case, of course, Press the start button and of course take it off the M. You see, I'm pressing the start button, nothing happens. Take it off the M and press the start button. There you go. And you can see it spinning right there. And as soon as it got to one, it will leave it there. Now let's say I, I took the shot, right? So let's say I'm on M mode. I took the shot. This thing didn't whine over here. And I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and then maybe use the camera a couple more times. And now I wanna shoot normal, but I'm over here. So I'm still in frame number one. Of course, I can put it on M again and keep shooting, um, but it's not gonna let me shoot until the next frame. So what if I need to change to the next frame and I don't wanna do this wind, this lever thing? You can actually just press start. And it will advance the the, the, the film that it's missing. And it didn't wind the, the mirror or the clock or, or the shutter over here. It just did this thing that it was missing uh, from the, the from winding to, to be able to shoot in the normal mode. Now I can go ahead and shoot if I had not that on there there you go now I can go ahead and shoot and it won't meet for the third one now I can go ahead and do the M it's, it's I'm doing my two double double triple exposure so I shot maybe a landscape now I'm shooting a phase there we go and now I'm shooting something else and as you can see uh, as long as it's on the M, the, the camera would actually, it sounds like it's moving, but this thing is not winding. So it's still my third exposure. Now when I move on, I go to the middle and press start. And as you can see this over here, it spins. So now it left me on the fourth frame. That is one, uh, one funny thing, <laughs> well, one thing to, to consider when you're using this. Uh, now uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the wireless system. So wireless system, basically you have a remote control, basically uh, what is this thing called? Uh, one of those things from the TV, an IR, and you put something in here. Now it's, it's a little stick like this big probably, and you put it over here, you slide it in there, and you connect it to these pins and you basically you just point that thing and, and send the signal over here and it will actually trigger the shot and this uh, device over here sold separately it it actually receives power from the the winder so that's something to, to take in account the winder sends the power through this little button in here to the to the wireless i haven't seen one for sale i haven't even seen one available anywhere i didn't even know that existed until i actually went to, to read the manual for this so yeah that's something to take in count i think that's pretty much enough for the winder everything it's in working condition if it's not working as i use it in a, a lot of different situations with polaroids with film without film uh, i finished a roll of film 
Um, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and finish another roll of film over here since it's just a test. This is number four. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my number five as long as I take this guy out. There you go, it's number five right there. Six, seven, eight. And there you go, you can see now it's struggling now. The batteries are pretty much run out and that is perfect. I wanted to show you guys that. There you go. Now it's just completely not even not even wanting to shoot. It says that it's needing some crank. This thing is not letting it's not working in there. Oh my god. So I come over here, test it. You can see it's blinking really fast. It says you need to replace those batteries right away. I don't know what's going on, it's stuck. Oh my god. I tried to take it out and hear what happens. There you go, it's all the way down there. Now this thing still doesn't shoot. It tells me that I need to crank it, it's giving me that lever, that lever error. But I cannot move forward. This, the lens is actually closed down. I didn't actually open the lens. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? Don't worry. We are all cool. It's, the camera is not bricked or anything. Bring it all the way back to the emergency mode. Still not shooting in any mode. But now I actually can crank. So basically I just didn't I didn't I didn't have the power enough to, to open the 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 lens. Basically, I just left it closed like that. Not a big deal, really. Um, don't be, don't be scared. So there we go. It's not shooting anymore. I need to crank it. Let's, let's put this winder back in there. Let's see if it has some juice left. There you go. Let's see if we can shoot it. Nothing. Let's press start. And there you go. I tried to do the eight. It's all winded up. Let's do one more shot. Let's see if we can we can get the nine. It's eight right there. And yeah, I can't get the nine there because this thing is in again. Alright, let's see the nine. There you go. It managed to get the nine right there. But it didn't wind up because it's on M. Alright. And now it's giving me the issues. So I'm gonna help a little bit. There we go. I got a number nine. Number 10. I shoot the last one, number 10. And automatically starts trying to get my film back in there. So there we go. Um, if I open this. You can see the film is all the way on this side, ready for takeout, all winded up really pretty. So that will be pretty much it for the Winder 2. Um, I hope it helps and it answers some questions. Uh, a lot of times you just want to see somebody using it just to make sure that yours is actually working. So here you go, I use it in a lot of situations. With film, without film, without winding, pulling it out, changing digital bags, Polaroid bags, lenses. Um, uh, I even had the error. I had low batteries. Um, I've been pushing all the buttons that I can in all kinds of situations. So you have nothing to worry as long as it actually, if this thing moves, this thing should also move as well. Uh, I show you a couple of errors that I've had before, like, <laughs> basically putting too much voltage on too much voltage in there uh, putting the batteries backwards making this too tight that it will not allow it to move uh, maybe obviously to lose is also bad uh, batteries are faulty 
or contacts that are not making well contact or of course there's always this this thing going on that you have to just wiggle it a little bit so it works back again and yeah so that will be it for this video i hope it it's helpful for somebody and um yeah thanks justin for all the comments it's it's always been fun to to see somebody working with the system and um see you guys soon bye bye